In a system, such as our planet where two bodies, one with larger mass than the other, such as our own Earth and Moon, or Earth and Sun, there are five points known as the Lagrange points, where the combined gravitational forces of two large bodies equal the centrifugal force felt by a much smaller third body. This enables smaller body to remain in constant orbit with those two larger bodies requiring fewer orbital corrections. An object such as a satellite can be placed which will remain at that point relative to the two bodies. These points are named after Joseph Louis Lagrange, an 18th century mathematician. Think of them as orbital parking spots. Things put at these locations tend to stay there, thanks to a balancing act between gravity and the centrifugal force. To understand this further, let's take an example of how these points work for satellites placed around Sun and Earth. In Sun-Earth system, Sun is at the center, and the Earth revolves around it. Because the Sun is so massive, it has far greater gravitational pull than Earth. The L1 point for the Sun-Earth system is just 1 million miles from the Earth, and distance from Earth to Sun is roughly 93 million miles. Now if we place a spacecraft at L1 point which is closer to Earth, the Earth's gravity pulls it in the opposite direction and cancels some of the Sun's pull. With a weaker pull towards the Sun because of its distance from L1 point, the spacecraft needs less speed to maintain its orbit and remain in the spot throughout its orbital journey around Sun with little course corrections. L1 is a good position for spacecraft to monitor the Sun as it can capture advanced solar measurements and early warnings of potentially dangerous space weather events at least an hour before it reaches Earth. Some of the solar weather monitoring and science observation missions at L1 include ACE, SOHO, WIND, SCOVR and few more. When we place spacecraft over L2 point, which is roughly 900,000 miles behind the Earth, as viewed from the Sun, it is a great place from which to observe the larger universe. Since spacecraft would not have to make constant orbits of the Earth, which result in it passing in and out of the Earth's shadow and causing it to heat up and cool down, resulting in distorting views, the L2 point provides a much more stable position for distort less views for solar observatory missions. The James Webb Space Telescope, for example, will not be in orbit around the Earth, like the Hubble Space Telescope is, rather it will be on L2 point, hoping to provide far greater views on our solar system. The L3 point lies on the line defined by the two large masses, beyond the larger of the two. In our case it lies behind the Sun, opposite to Earth, just beyond our planet's orbit. The objects in L3 cannot be seen from Earth. Agencies like NASA unlikely to find any use for the L3 point to place any observatory missions, since it remains hidden behind the sun at all times. As you can see in this illustration, a spacecraft at L1, L2, or L3 is metastable, like a ball sitting on top of a hill. A little push or bump and it starts moving away. So a spacecraft must use rocket firings roughly every 25 days or so to stay in so-called halo orbits around these Lagrangian points. The L4 and the L5 Lagrange points lie along Earth's orbit at 60 degrees ahead of and behind Earth, forming the apex of two equilateral triangles that have the large masses, in this case Earth and the Sun, as their vertices. Unlike the other Lagrange points, L4 and L5 are resistant to gravitational anxiety. Because of this stability, objects such as dust and asteroids tend to accumulate in these regions. The L4 and L5 are also possible points for a space colony due to their relative proximity to Earth. 